live from beautiful downtown Des Moines here at the Painted Lady in Sherman Hill. It is Missy Information Teaches Trivia. Woo! Is this what the audience would cheer? Yay! Yay! And the theme song. Do, 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 Hey! Uh, we have some wonderful trivia that's going to be going on tonight. And I have a very special guest who is our audience surrogate for the evening. She's a very dear friend of mine. Uh, we have been acting together here in Des Moines for almost a decade. I want that to sink in before I let you in. 10 years you've been stuck with me. And this is the wonderful Becky Schultek. <laughs> Hello, Becky. Hello, Michael. Sometimes when I'm not, you know, Missy, I gallivant around as an actor named Michael Tallman. Well, yes. Uh, and he's been in uh, several plays with you, uh, and I've we've we've had some interesting dynamics. We have been mother and son, of course, in our first show. Uh, I was your boss, and you were my employee. Uh, then you, were, then we were lovers, ex lovers. Then I was the love interest of your daughter. Yes, then I was your employee. And then, has there been anything? You well, you stage managed a show I directed, so you were there's that dynamic. But yes, I'm trying to think if those are the whole of the dynamics. And we're going to be playing. It looks like there's one more. I think there has to be one. This is you know you've been friends too long. I've done too much theater when you can't remember every single play you've done just with one individual, not alone <laughs> everything. So we. Oh wait, I think I think you may have said the one that I was that I thought was missing. Well, we can go through the list real quick. Okay. We can just go through that. So names of plays to check out, everyone, if you haven't seen them. Becky's New Car, which I did, don't think they specifically cast you because your name was Becky, but it probably didn't, like, hurt at all. It didn't hurt <laughs> at all. And then partway through the rehearsal period, I actually bought a new car. I was going to name that if you didn't. I figured you were going to say it. Yeah. That, that was my first play in Des Moines, actually. My first play graduating college. It was a wonderful experience. And one of the promo show to, promo uh, photos from that show is still, I think, my favorite photo of the t of of me and Michael. Oh wait, I don't. Which one is that? <laughs> it's the one where we're on the couch arguing with each other. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, because well, it's like us in real life. It is, and it also is starts the trend that I'm very aware of, which is um, me having my mouth slightly agape. Like a bit of a slack jaw person. All my photos of him is always like, and, you know, it's because I, one, I just can't shut up. So my mouth is always open. And then two, I, I, you know, I just put on a good, I'm really trying to understand. So, oh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, face. It's my go to, but it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, plays we have been it is been Becky's new car. Then we did um, Good People, uh, where we both had to have Sally, Southie. Boston accents, which I don't even know if I'd be able to pull it back. I mean, you do the same thing. Yeah, you, you, you started saying those same words again. Yeah, that's true. Um, but had one of my favorite um, props in it, which was there's a lady who um, makes small animal rabbits that are on there. And I kept one from it. I'm going to go get it. I'm also going to move this laundry. It looks a little bit tacky. Even though it's the reality, laundry needs to be done. People get your laundry done too. You graduate, you're grabbing yours. <laughs> my Mr. Bill rabbit. Whoops, I can't. There we go. One. Oh my God, I love it. There's one. And now. There's one. Where's and your then... friend? Hello. There we go. Genuinely, yes. I love camera. Genuinely love yes. this. It's one of my favorite things. I'm going to keep it here just in case. She, oh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Bill Bunny needs to make an appearance. Um, but that was great. That was um, the second play I ever did, which was, again, just weird going from one to the other with you. Uh, then I, I finally did something on my own You're without awesome. you. Um, so, uh, and then we, so then I did a play without you. Oh, and then we did a play called The Norwegians together. Uh, yes. Not the best script, uh, but we made it work as much as we could. No, I, I, no, I can. It's Missy fine. can say that. Missy can say that. Missy didn't think it was the best script, but we did really well with it. That's, we did. You know, that's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> um, then after that, am I missing the one? Because Girls Weekend was before Holes. Yes. Correct? 
So we did an original play by a local playwright, Karen Schaefer, of which we're going to be doing the sequel, hopefully, Omicron and all that, uh, pending in April. Yeah. Uh, and that is where I played your daughter's love interest uh, on that. And a very fun, very fun farce. It was one of the things we really actually didn't act much at all, if anything, I, which is the very fun part, funny part of it. It's like, yes. I did a show with you, but I really didn't do a show with you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Holes, uh, where you were the warden and I was Mr. Podansky. And that is the one that my friends talk the most about. Uh, having seen it, they really, really loved the dynamic we had. And I think they just liked someone being someone being able to like be an asshole to me and have me just be like, oh. I think they just loved really seeing that, as well as you know the sand pit face plant. Yeah. Of which that sort of physicality, I hope to bring to the sequel of Girls Weekend. <laughs> then, um, has there been anything else that I'm missing? I think that might be all. Like, like I said, we, you stage managed for me. Yes. And I don't think there's another no, one. No, I think but... that's it. Because yeah. I the other shows that I'm thinking of are shows that we've worked on <clears throat> um, not as actors. Mm. Yes. Yep, yes. yep, yep. So that'll be fun. So pre-promotion here, if you're in the Des Moines area or want to come in. Uh, we're going to be doing Girls Weekend 2 with Iowa Stage Theater Company. So, pew, 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 original comedy, pew, pew, local, pew, pew, yay. Yay. But we're not here to gabber on and on about all the theater we've done. Not exclusively. Uh, we're here to play trivia. I'm here to teach oh. you some information okay. and to teach you some trivia. All right. Are all you right ready there. to play? Ooh, that's what it, as the Saddle Trivia, our local day, gay bar, always says, Trivia is not just about knowing, it's also about learning. And so we're going to do that today uh, with our three categories, which I will tease for you right now. We're going to be doing a round on famous scandals. We're going to be doing a round on the Muppets. And we'll also be doing a round called uh, A Thousand Words Are Worth a Painting, in which I will describe a famous painting, very famous paintings. Don't worry, not going to be too obscure. And you just have to name the name of the painting. You know, bonus Missy okay. points if you can name the artist as well, but that's not what I'm looking for. So, all right, those are three things we're doing. Yes. And then at the end, we'll also play a non-trivia special bonus round of uh, the parlor game uh, that my friends and I have made. Uh, in uh, we made before, and now we'll be doing it again in honor of the passing of Meatloaf, which is the parlor game. Which is more meatloaf? Or simply, we provide you with two options, and you just have to tell us based on your own criteria which one is more like the singer's uh, meatloaf. All right. So I'm going to do that. If you have any suggestions for uh, anyone that has any suggestions for uh, scenarios we should do, you can just pick two th different things that can be opposing, that can be similar. Just throw it in the chat and we will ask uh, the best ones for Becky at the end of which one she thinks are more meatloaf. Do you want to start with a certain round or do you want Missy's choice? Missy's choice. Oh, good. Because I'm going to be starting with famous scandals. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Everyone loves a good scandal, even the TV show scandal, which there may be a question on. Oh, who knows? I do. Let me share my screen here for all of you to see. Ba -ba -ba. Hey, hey, look at that. Famous scandals. I'm going to make a big screen on that, too, so that you don't have to see the, all the tabs and everything on there. So, yeah, we're going to go back one soon. Perfect. Famous scandals. What do you remember, or do you remember these sensational stories? Do you? Do you, Becky? Do you? Probably most of them. Yeah, honestly, probably most of them. It's yeah. just whether or not you know the missing information. So if you're playing along at home, please don't uh, put the answers in the chat right away. Um, write them all down. Um, there'll be 10 questions. Um, keep it to yourself uh, until the end. Then you can post your answers all at once on there. Um, Becky will be doing the same. She'll be keeping track of her answers. Uh, then we'll be scoring it at the end. Obviously, you get one point for every correct answer. Um, those points are worth absolutely nothing except for the pride and accomplishment that you feel on how you want to do in trivia. But just remember, these are the most random inane questions I'm asking. If you don't know, that's probably not a bad thing. It's probably better that you don't have that rattling around your head like I do with all of this unnecessary information. Hence the name. Here we go. Trivia question number one. If you peeked at it already when I, when I showed it to you, here it is. Who stars 
as Diana, Princess of Wales in the upcoming movie Spencer. And that probably should actually say the uh, current having been already a movie Spencer uh, since at the time this had not been released yet. Missy, Missy spent a little bit of time doing her makeup, so didn't have 100% time to go and proofread all the Ooh, questions proofread. again. Yep. I am already thinking, oh, no, I know there's some typos coming up that I'm already going to have to apologize. <laughs> all right. Yes. I know this one. Good, good. We'll give the audience uh, at home to do it. I like this because I can actually technically say I am filming this live in front of a studio audience. The studio audience is just in front of me digitally on right. the DC Information Superhighway. Yay. So question number two now. Question two in our round on famous scandals. The Watergate scandal led to the gate suffix that gets attached to modern scandals. But what is the titular Watergate? I will let you get as specific or general i mean there's there's a couple technical answers that are correct um but i'm looking for if you happen to know it specifically what the the watergate scandal was was uh based off of for anyone who thinks i'm pretentious this was once filled with icelandic water but now it's just tap water so i'm only slightly pretentious for keeping the bottle Mm, that Icelandic water was good, though, wasn't it? I did. I, we went to Iceland separate times, not together. Uh, I went a few years ago, and you went just this last year. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. The wonderful experience. And you went to the – it's totally off traffic, but you went to the lava tube that we went to, right? I think we learned that. Yes! That was so cool. Yes, Anyone going to Iceland, look at the lava tube. Literally, I think you just type in lava tube. Lava. I guess, not lava. <laughs> or Not lava. Not labia. Lava. Um, the lava tube. Uh, Don't Google lady tube. You can if you want. It's a free country. I just, I mean, I'm not going to be responsible for the suggested results afterwards. Don't let your parents see. <laughs> Question three. Or, you know, if you're... Uh, don't let your parents see. I mean, I don't. But also, if you have that kind of relationship with your parents and you're open about it, more power to you. But right. that's not how the relationship I have with my parents whatsoever. Question three. In 2010... Julian Assange and others used what website to disseminate a series of diplomatic cables causing various international scandals? They used what website to disseminate? A word that I did not pick specifically on purpose. I'm lying. But you're going to enjoy the happy accident of it being there? Oh, no, that's was all intentional. Missy's very purposeful. It, unless it's a typo. Obviously, that's, you know, entirely purposeful as well. Question number four. <laughs> Question four. Fraudulent accounting led to the Enron scandal and the company's collapse in 2001. But what type of business was Enron? Is this one that you know, Becky? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, I mean, you don't have to say the answer, but I was curious. Now, do you do you remember when this was? Oh, God, like, was I, this and yes. Worldcom? One hundred percent remember this happening. I I remember like that's what this is from the era when I first started learning about news stories and kind of being tuned in. I can't remember if it was pre or post nine eleven, but like basically after that, like I became like most Americans just you know addicted to keeping up on the news and stuff. Um so I remembered this happening, but I kind of remember go back into mind to to think about the answer to the question, which is why I made that the question, because it's an interesting answer. And now we're gonna go to question number five. Mm -hmm. Question five in 2009, what sports figure admitted to multiple infidelities a few days after crashing his car into a fire hydrant near his Florida mansion? You, ha I'm assuming you have to remember this one. I think that I do. You think that you do? Okay. I think this is, that I do. This was one of those ones where it just was. It was so bizarre, and the figure yes. was so. Big. I think I remember it. Yes, I a little don't clue. Pay it's... Attention to sports, really, whatsoever. Well, this kind of made you pay attention. This is one of the things where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying, a sports so person. If I remember who this is, which I think I remember who this is, yeah. then yes. It was a. It was very unexpected. We shall say. Yeah. Uh, okay, now we're going to the next question. Question six. 
This is my favorite question. I I don't expect you to remember this. It is very hard. No, but it oh. is my favorite. But the I answer is my favorite. You know, know here we go. This. Here we go. Becky, I love you. This is why we're friends. Here we go. Question number six. After being accused of lewd conduct in a men's bathroom at the <laughs> Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport, Senator Lake resigned and used what two-word excuse as to why his feet made repeated contact with the undercover officer. Oh, I, thank you. This is one of those For scandals that, that I from the past. I so I love the scandal. It was again so bizarre. It was close enough because in Des Moines, obviously, we're not too far from Minneapolis, so it was also just like okay. And it has all of the elements that an in the closet, you know, yes. young kid would just find fascinating. Of like, oh, this is a thing. It was yes. I think the first time that I realized that people used public bathrooms for quote lewd conduct and i was like ew gross <laughs> but what was the lewd conduct can you go into that a bit more anyways so yes he resigned and then that two word excuse it is one of my favorite two word phrases for yes ever. and here we go number seven there was a question on it who starred as olivia pope on the abc political thriller scandal I now did you watched it you never watched it, but do you know? I never watched it either, but it's one of those things where, you know, I saw this person around and they, you know, guest appeared on like SNL type things. Yeah. And, you know, it was around in that way. Yeah. And so I'm obviously aware of of this, um, the, the person who played it on there. But yeah, I just, you know, never... I, I think I, I got ruined by watching House of Cards and then just how sort of like left a bad taste in my mouth that I just was off of political, like actual serious political scandal things uh -huh. and like that for a while and really got into Veep. <laughs> Veep was my like, oh, <laughs> this is like my my antidote for the House of Cards because this feels much more like what reality would be <laughs> like. All right, here we go. Question number eight. Again, a, 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 I'm praising my own questions. Oh, lovely question. Good job, Missy. Great question. No, this is, I again, just a personal favorite scandal of mine. In her book and one-woman show, Wishful Drinking, Carrie Fisher describes her father's scandalous affair where he left her mother for another famous actress. Can you name any two of the three people involved in her affair? Just to clarify, that would be her mother, her father, or the famous actress. I... Got to see this one woman show when I was in Chicago. It was a college trip. It was a spur of the moment. I saw what's going on. I basically asked permission to go by myself away from the group just to go to the theater. And they basically were like, oh, we know here, Michael, we know you're such a square that you, this is obviously what you actually are going to go do is go to a one woman show. So, yes, you can go do that by yourself. You're fine. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Being, being, being cheesy works out every once in a while. She um, brought a person on stage and uh, in response to not really humiliating him, but having him to participate, you know, an audience participation, which, you know, no one and everyone wants to do. Uh, they um, uh, gave her, gave him a box of uh, penis shaped pasta. It was wonderful. For his thank you gift? Yes, as a thank you. Yes, here's your yes. penis shaped pasta. Here we go. Obscure but fun. Number nine, the defenestrations of Prague were a series of middle-aged political scandals that happened over religious conflicts and resulted because this is where one of the typos is, well, resulted in several wars. That's what it means. What does the word defenestration mean? And this is Missy's tip, just the tip. It is an action you do to someone. Is this something you're familiar with, Becky? Yes. Yes. Yes, in the sense of you know what it means and you've heard. I was, I'm not expecting you to know the details of like, oh, which side and who and what were the related, but you know you've heard of this in general. It's one this is one of those this is one of those trivia things that kind of goes around because it's a weird part of history and I love it. Yes. We only have one question left on the famous scandals, so why don't we just get to it? Okay. In the movie Mean Girls, what is the name for the collection of rumors? stories and gossip that gets disseminated oh there's that word again to all the students and teachers of north shore high school i was a late bloomer into um 
to Mean Girls because I, I think like most guy bros, you know, at the time, uh, just thought it was a chick flick and was like, no, nah, this is like a movie for my sister. Uh, not realizing that, and also I just never went to high school. I was homeschooled. Not realizing that my main character is also a homeschooler who ended up at a high school, and I could relate to that part of it at least. Um, but yes, it uh, it's an interesting movie that I know love. Are you a fan of the film? Yes, I have you... watched the film several times. And do you know this answer? Though? I cannot, at this moment, come up with the n name of that item. Okay, well then, we are going to find out in a moment because you are now allowed to go back to any questions. This will be the time, obviously, when we're in a crowded bar and people are shouting over drinks and everything like that. Um, if you need to go back to any questions, I can do that for you right now. We can stay on number 10 for a hot second to give you time to think, but are there any other ones that you would like to go back to? Um, um, uh, no. Cool. Very confident on this. I like it. I mean, if all, if again, if any of my friends are going to know the answer to these, you would be one of them. Well. Really racking your brain on it. I know. I mean, like, I can see it happening in mm -hmm. the film. Mm -hmm. eh. It's fine. Again, trivia is just as much about learning as is about knowing. And I just say that as a consolation to be like, ha ha, you don't know. You don't know it. Yeah, that's, that's a sign of mental deficiency. Whatever. No, yeah, it's seriously whatever. Okay. Let's get to the answers of this first round, shall Let's we? Do it. Um, and I believe it'll all come down on one uh, page here. So we'll just uh, kind of go over the questions as the answers. Here we go. Famous scandals are famous scandals are answers for number one. Uh, who plays uh, a lady uh, Diana in the new movie Spencer? Uh, that is Kristen Stewart. Uh, the Watergate suffix comes from the Washington D.C. hotel. Um, the Watergate, which is where um, Nixon's uh, stooges broke into and stole um, uh, information from the Democratic Party there. Number three, Julian Assange and others used WikiLeaks to disseminate that information. Number four, Enron was an energy company, which is, you think is, don't really think about something that someone has to trade in energy, but it's like, okay, I guess someone has to, you know, do that. I mean, they don't have to, but, you know, no does. Uh, and it turns out they weren't very good at it. Uh, five is Tiger Woods. Was that the person that you thought? Yes. Good. Yes. Six is a wide, wide stance. stance. I'm, again, I'm so, so happy that you know this. <laughs> it is those I two am so words. I'm glad that you reminded me. Two that words get buried in my head. A, a, a wide stance. Why does it mean a wide stance? I mean, I sometimes have a kind of wise, but I'm not touching other people's foot. That's a weird, that's a really wide state. That's an yeah. obscenely wide state. That's up to some, that's suspicious if you have that. Like you have other problems, go to a doctor if you have that wide of a stance when you're trying to, you know, mm -hmm. relieve yourself in there. Number seven. I stance. Carrie Washington is the, from Scandal. So uh, I put, I have no idea, but it should have been Audra McDonald. Ooh. I will not disagree on that, which is no shade to Kerry Washington. But I honestly, haven't seen the show, so I can't say how well she does. That but is I would pretty much the correct answer to any question mm. of who was this actress. You could just say that. That is beautiful. I will steal that. It works for everything. Um, are we going to drop the fact that in fact that the person who designed these in our play is the cousin of, of her husband? <laughs> She's just a fun little fact. Uh, I should say of Audrey McDonald's uh, uh, husband. Here we go. Question eight. The, this was the uh, Carrie Fisher family scandal. Uh, the answers are Debbie Reynolds, Eddie Fisher, or Elizabeth Taylor. Did you get two of the three of those? I, or did you I, get all three? I got two of the three. Okay. Which was the one that you got incorrect? I didn't even try for Elizabeth Taylor because I didn't. Oh, just couldn't. Know that that's who that was. Yeah. So. Uh, one of the sh stories she sh shared um, 
during the thing because she had a, a long bit about it was that her daughter and Elizabeth Taylor's granddaughter, grandson, um, met at a party and kind of like hit it off. And uh, her daughter came home and is like, "Hey, I just want to make sure, like, we're not related, right?" <laughs> Carrie just talked about when she said, mm, "Only by scandal." Only by scandal. I just love that. Uh, nine defenestration. You knew this to be thrown from a window. Thrown. Yeah, it was basically a, a mob justice scenario where they just chucked these people out of a window. Uh, and then 10, the one that you could not remember, that is called the burn book. The burn. I came up with the bitch book. Very close, but not quite. But not uh, correct. Not quite correct, yes. Nope. But still, that was 9 out of 10 for you? Yeah. Wow. Becky, as an audience surrogate. Yeah. No, 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 no. Really, oh, eight. Because eight. I didn't, I mean. Oh, Kerry Washington, that's right. We you can't didn't, count. Yes, yes. No, you're right. I had forgotten. No idea, but it should have been. But still, eight, as, as an audience surrogate, my gosh, audience, good job. Really Yay. good job. And especially all of you playing along at home. I'm going to quickly chat, quick, what our Twitch chat. Twitch chat. Twitch, 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 Twitch chat. And we're going to see, uh. How uh, some of you did. If you want to post your answers in here, I'll take a look at those uh, when we are done moving through and going on to our next piece of trivia here. So I am going to stop sharing my screen while I get that loaded. Um, Becky, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Girls Weekend and give maybe your little elevator pitch, or should go to Girls Weekend 2, um, give a little elevator pitch why anyone who uh, is watching this uh, on, my, my friends and family who are watching this on the YouTube replay, strangers I share it to, gays on Twitter, you know, all of those people. The, most, the important people in our lives, gay friends, family, gay people on Twitter. <laughs> yes, hi, all of those people. Um, uh, uh, Girls Weekend 2 is um, the sequel to um, Girls Weekend. I know. That's surprising. <laughs> I am sh Wow. That's a, that's a revelation. I didn't make that connection. That's a really yeah. good drop. But it's very um, We have a friend um, named Karen Schaefer, who is a fantastic local um, so actor and writer and stage manager. And I don't you know, all of the other wonderful things yes. that Karen does. And um, Karen wrote Girls Weekend about, what has that been, eight years ago it now? It was, was that 2014? Yes. Or 2000, okay. It was 2014 or 15. I can't remember. I think it was 14. 14. It was, yes, it was 14. Yeah. Okay. And um, why we like the play is because it's a farce, but um, nobody gets hurt in it, um, and it's funny. And it is so funny. It is more funny than it has any right to be. And a large part of this has to do with the cast. I like I said, Girls Weekend. I was not on stage a whole bunch. My my bit was basically doing a like climbing up and down a ladder in the background and eating a pie. Like those yeah. were my like I was there to do those things and let the women and everyone else do. An incredible job. Um, and uh, we have a wonderful actress who's in our cast uh, named Nancy Zubrod, who plays Dot and has to be delivered delivered one of the singular funniest performances I have seen in any work, in any medium, at any point in my life. I'm talking better than movies, theater I've seen, you know, whatever. I, I, genuinely downstairs in conniptions laughing at her timing how funny it is. And... The entire cast is going to be back again, so we're going to have fun with the dynamic that we originally had in here, which is very rare that an entire cast yeah. of people of what? It was like eight people. It's not a small yeah. cast. Yeah. Are all able to align again. But hey, yeah. it's Des Moines. That's the nice thing is that we're all know each other. Well, and we're not super busy, to, you know, having to do right. other projects. And, and stuff. we all wanted to work together again. Yes. And we all yes. wanted to work with the director again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we wanted to work with this material mm -hmm. again. So it was all it, like... I would have, I would have my easiest mouth. yes in my life. Yes. Easy said, hey, we're going to see Goldie. Uh, give me the script. We I were going to do this go. thing. You haven't even read it yet. I don't care. I'll do it. 
Uh, and a little spoiler, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more physical comedy in here, and I'm going to push myself to where it doesn't hurt, but everyone is going to look like it, and I'm excited. That's the little teaser there. Okay. Hey, do you want to pick our next category here, the Muppets or uh, Paintings Are Worth a Thousand Words? Oh, well, let's, let's, um, what do we want to save for last? Let's save the Muppets for last. Perfect. That I can certainly do. I'm gonna get this shared on our screen here in just a hot moment. And remind me at the end, Becky, I'm gonna be asking you, what should be my next trivia round that I write? One of them, I'm gonna give you the, the option as a guest. You don't have to say it right now, but I'm gonna let you think. And then at the end, I'll be getting that for my next trivia session. I'm gonna pass on the, the buck to everyone else as it were. All right, this is one of my little favorite rounds that I have come up with. It is interesting. It will tickle your brain because I love um, images that uh, that get conjured up uh, through just the simple act of talking about it. Just full screen and then, then present it. There we go. I can see it. Yep. Here we go. First question, or first sentence, I should say, for words are worth a thousand paintings. Uh, can you identify 10 of the most famous paintings in the world by description? When I say 10 of the most famous paintings in the world, I mean 10 of the most famous paintings in the world. You should mentally be able to conjure all these up. If you know the names or not is a different uh, thing, but you will know these ones we're talking about. I'm not trying to throw any curveballs here. So, all right. first one. Two male figures sit at a distance apart one on land and one in the sky, surrounded by angels. Their outstretched hands reaching to touch each other by a single finger. Does that conjure any images up for you, Becky? Huh? It does. It does. And do you know the name of it? That's the next question. Do you in the audience know? Yes, you. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Shall I move to the next one? Please. Here we go. Question two. A woman, uh, or uh, I should say answer two. A woman with long hair sits looking at the viewer with a half smile, her hands folded in her lap. And yes, uh, technically you could say this applies to a lot of different paintings, but what's the famous one? The one that you instantly thought of? Write that one down. Makes sense. Yep. Now number three, here we go. Number three, a father and his daughter stand in front of a white farmhouse. The man is looking at the viewer and holding a piece of farming implement. Piece of farming implement, singular. The woman is looking off in the distance. And if you don't know this one, Becky, I am going to be ashamed of you. I... I wasn't born in the state where I live now, but I feel like oh, for people who were born in this state, um, I think you just come out of the womb knowing the answer. That is true. I do you know? I didn't realize that you weren't from Iowa. That's a little. That's a little fact that Missy's just learning. I just by See, it's pretty context. nice. And this again. But if that was a question that you'd ask me, where was Becky born? I would have said Iowa and would have gotten. No points. No points. No points. Question four. <laughs> Thirteen figures sit at a table, 12 of them arguing with each other while one tries to maintain the peace. All ignore the meal set out before them. And it looks like a good meal, too. Hmm. Hmm. Shall I move on to five? Sure. Okay. Number five. A view overlooking a small town is offset by a brilliant, swirling nocturne sky, the celestial objects. Also, there's this thing on the left of the painting. That is the top of a tree, but that's less important to it. Okay. 
Can you imagine the brilliant swirling nocturne sky full of celestial objects? I can. Good, good. I feel almost immersed in it. You can feel it washing over you, exactly. Close your eyes. Oh, I'm seeing stars. I must be lightheaded. Number six. <laughs> this, this is a, a funny thing that I did. A non-gender specific pale figure covers their ears on a bridge. Two figures walking away from him. Him. In the distance. I I gendered, the, I instantly in my mind gendered what I think it is, but it is a non-gender specific figure. It is. Uh, the sky is a brilliant red orange above the light blue waters of the fjord. Was this an excuse to hammer in the word fjord? It might have been. You should always take that chance. Yes. When, you get it, when it presents itself. And rarely does it. Unless you're talking about Norway or Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Those are the two different things that I can think of that reference fjords. And this question. Here we go. Number seven. A young woman looks at the viewer in half profile, wearing a blue and cream turban on her head and a single white piece of jewelry in a lobe. But which lobe? Ooh. I cannot even picture the original in my mind anymore. Mm -hmm. I can only picture the cat version. I don't know if I've seen the cat version. Well, you just have to put the word cat in the name. I, maybe we'll have to look that up after we get and, the answers. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Number eight. Mm -hmm. A classical mythology scene depicting three gods looking upon the creature of a female god. Don't know actually what I meant by the creature of a female god, but there it is. She stands, oh boy, I did this to myself. Here we go. She stands on a seashell in the sea with her skin seam. She stands on a seashell in the sea <laughs> with her skin seam. Thank you. Near a seashore. That was, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was, it was an inspired moment. This pain, you know, great art, great art, great art evokes feelings. Sometimes you have to express them in a tongue twister. <laughs> All right, number nine. This was one that people had a little bit difficulty knowing the name of. So here we'll see if yeah. you can do that. A landscape featuring a seaside cliff and a wasteland with a single dead tree on it. Oh, and there are a bunch of melting clocks all over the place. Yep. Hi, Jordan. Do I know, what do I know I the name of it? Yeah, do you know the name of it? No. 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 Maybe that's why I threw it in there as a slight curve of a So far, I think you've been able to get every, every other one right. <laughs> we might have another, uh, not another, but we might have a, instead of an eight, a nine point round for you. Here we go. Do you need, uh, we'll give you some more time at this one on the no, end. Let's go ahead, the, you're not going to have it. That's fine. We'll get to number 10 then. Uh, number 10, a series of 250 paintings depicting the same flower garden, predominantly featuring plants growing on the surface of a pond. And it is, it's, uh, this was something I learned when researching it, was that it, it, there were 250 paintings that this artist did of it. I knew that he had done, uh, he, he had done multiple, but I didn't realize the, the I extent of it either. I did not realize there were 250. Uh, yes. I mean, I, it makes a lot more sense now because every once in a while I think about each museum and a lot of them that I visited tend to have a copy of yeah. one of these. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, oh, okay. I think the, the, that's why I keep, Finding some of these around is there's just a lot of them there. So many of them. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get to the answers here in a second, but I'm going to give the audience at home uh, a little bit of time to kind of go over and think about it. Um, again, sorry, I can't give you any repeats of questions in here because Becky doesn't need them, but that's when you log in live to watch this on Twitch. And so watching it on the YouTube, you'll be able to do that. Hey, hey. I mean, if you're on YouTube, you can just rewind it and go back to when I say the clue and pause it. You know, that's 
actually totally an option. I would say goodbye to Jordan. Goodbye. Bye. That's why I like, I do like this here because it is like we always get a, a, like a Mr. McFeely drop in special guest every once in a while. <laughs> okay. I think that's enough time for you in the audience and enough, uh, enough bantering. And we will now get to answering. Uh, I believe each of these slides have their own individual one here where we're going to see the work Ooh. in question. If I, pick, if I pulled the right one up. And I did. Uh, number one. That is the creation of Adam, the two figures Adam. reaching out to touch each other, but they don't touch. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, f a fun little uh, missy, missy info here. Uh, the part that God is in, the fabric behind it, there is a theory that that could have been Michelangelo painting a half section of the human brain to sort of represent um, man's, you know, intelligence and all that, um, kind of being passed through and all that. Uh, and the reason that people think so is that he was known to have gone to some what were illegal dissections at the time. Uh -huh. And so he probably did see this, whether or not that's the direct inspiration or not. But uh, you could put a cross half section on it and it fits. It really fits. So yeah. that's a fun Fun little detail there. Huh. Also, little penis. Number two, Mona Lisa. That famous half smile staring at you there. I have heard from everyone who's gone to see it. It is a huge disappointment. It is so small. It's always crowded. And you might as well just spend your time doing anything else in the Louvre other than going to the Mona Lisa. We did not bother. <laughs> That's okay. You might have been one of those people who even told me about it too. Did yeah, not it's, bother. It's, just it's yeah it, it, you've you've seen it you've seen the picture of it you don't need to see it being this big um one of the reasons it's actually even of of fame you know despite you know being a, a, the notoriety of da vinci all there is that uh this painting was selected by napoleon to hang over his bed in his bedroom or at least was in his bedroom I, I, you know maybe adding the the uh, slight detail of it over his bed but he certainly had it uh, in his bedroom uh at his place there yep and then from there, that's where why it ended up in the Louvre specifically. That and then the um, when it was stolen from the Louvre, that was the second detail that really sort of upped it up. Was the the art heist and kind of got everyone uh, in a tizzy and I'm like, oh, it's Mona Lisa. Oh, it must be important if it got stolen. Oh, you know, here. So that's hmm. how you monopolize off of uh, scandal. There you go. The scandals. Hmm. Number three, what all of us in Iowa here should know. Uh, the second most recognized image in the world at one point when I heard that fact, <laughs> uh, painting, I should say, American Gothic by Grant Wood. Uh, I have seen the house. Uh, it's on my route back from St. Louis when I visit. Uh, we drove up to it and I looked and I'm like, yep, that's the house and drove away. And the strange thing is it is in the middle of a residential neighborhood. It is just there. And you think about it, it's like, well, of course, because it's just a house, but I just wasn't expecting to like, Make right, some slight turns like past I mean, people, like just into a little small town, and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, yep, I'm here." <laughs> huh. I have seen the actual painting. I have not. I am. Mm, go ahead. No, please. I have made my children pose in front of that painting, making those faces. I because I am such a mom. No, I and love that. They both were like, no. I, I don't know if I'd ever be able to rope Alex into it, my husband. I would love to be able to have exposed us to this, but uh, I would be the farmer as as Missy, <laughs> and he would oh, be yeah. the daughter. <laughs> it would be great. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's oh, so stereotypical and also done now, again, because it is a famous image. Missy's other fun facts about this. Uh, fun and big quotation marks. The Gothic referenced in the American Gothic uh, is not a state of being. It's not the depiction of the mood of it. It is simply the window, the arched yep. window style in the background. That is the Gothic style that makes the titular American Gothic. Uh, other fun facts. The again, a lot of people I'm sure have heard this. If you know, if you're from Iowa, it gets repeated all the time. But uh, the person who plays the farmer's daughter, which a lot of people think is his wife, uh, that is Grant Wood's sister. And the person who played the farmer was his dentist. Dentist. 
And mm. that was a question that was worth $1 million on the syndicated version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And the gal who played Nancy Christie got it correct and was the first female, and I believe only female, to ever win a million dollars on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Wow. Why do I know that? Because it's a game show and I have to know these things. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, question four. The Last Supper, oh, yes. that is the oh, one of the 13 figures on there. None of them eating the meal before them, all of them arguing. Hey, again, more information from Missy that also involves who wants to be a millionaire. Ha ah, ha ha. Uh, but the part underneath, you can look at that section, that is a door that was knocked through the painting um, at a point when it was doing some renovations during... Uh, I believe maybe 1700s, 1800s, somewhere in there. But they just knocked the door through there because that is how little they kind of cared about it. And that partly is because the painting started peeling and deteriorating almost immediately after it was done. Because while da Vinci was a very smart individual in all sorts of sense of everything, he didn't also think he knew things better than everyone else. And he painted it on... Um, the dry plaster on there that you do with the fresco because it's paved on the wall. And I believe that you're supposed to paint on it when it's still wet or it might be oh. the opposite of that, but I, it makes more sense that you would paint on it when it's wet. So it dries and adheres to it versus you uh, doing the opposite of that on there. But yeah. And again, this was a question that someone uh, on who wants to be a millionaire could have won a million dollars on if they had guessed it correctly, um, but they chose to walk away, which is very smart. If they had get, what was the question? Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, I apologize. The question was what what painting kind of door knocked through it uh, at the <gasps> bottom of it, uh, and I just I knew I was just sitting going like, oh my god, I, it, it's the Last Supper. It's a fresco. Like in my head, I was repeating it to myself with no one around me, like it's a fresco. It's the Last Supper. I had a door. It, that's it. That's it. and then I'm like, oh, oh, I would have won a million dollars if I had been on there. But yeah, it was great. <laughs> No more. I don't think any more millionaire questions or references. I've lost probably the audience here, you know, <laughs> numerous times over. But I know that one's too much. Here we go. Let's get through these. Starry Night by Van Gogh. These celestial, celestial swirls, nocturne sky. Yes, but the, the part that I found interesting was that section on the left. I never really thought about what it was, uh, but it's the top of a cypress tree that Van Gogh could see from his window ah. when he painted there. Because there are, in fact, other paintings of that cypress tree and basically a different view of the town that he uh, could see from his window done during the day. Uh, I uh, didn't include any of those photos, but you can find them up there. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's simply just the view from his window. Uh, and it turned into one of the most iconic images uh, of our time. Number six, the screen. The ah, uh, no, nothing super. Uh, okay, so like, fun fact is that uh, there's three different versions of the screen. So when people reference the screen, it could be one of any three paintings done by Edward Munch. Um, maybe two paintings and, and like a sketch drawing for one, but for sure um, it just references three different pieces of of it that he did. He just basically you know did it three times over. Girl with the Pearl Earring is the uh, one for seven with the jewelry in her lobe. Uh -huh. uh, interesting, some people, uh, when we were talking about it, weren't sure of the answer because they believed that the top of her turban had hair coming out of it, um, which I did too until I you know, did research on it. And it's a style, like a Turkish style of, of turban, and that is a different piece of fabric that is coming out of it. Um, but yeah, played by Scarlett Johansson, I believe, in the movie Girl with the Pearl Earring, which I haven't seen. But that image just came up a lot when I was trying to search for this one. So I was like, oh, okay. There was a movie made of this. No, 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 no. You image searched this and you did not get Cat with the Pearl Earring? No, I didn't because there were like a thousand and wow. one pictures of either her or Scarlett Johansson. Okay. <laughs> I didn't type... Girl with the pearl earring and meme included. I'm sure I would have gotten it there. <laughs> Number eight, that is the birth of Venus with the, the seashell with her skin seen on there. Number nine, the one you didn't know the name of. That is the Ironic. persistence of memory. Persistence yes, of memory. by Salvador Dali. Dali. I, we have it somewhere. We have one of those melting clock clocks that is an actual clock that you can like put on the edge of your desk. And it's very amusing, but also slightly inconvenient to try and read. And then 10, the series of paintings. These were Monet's Water Lilies, where there's over 200. 
150 different versions of. And I honestly actually couldn't even tell you <laughs> the one that I picked here. Um, the fun fact about Waterlees, it's actually not quite a fun fact, but uh, the reason that the colors are what they are is people obviously knew that impressionism was about not making everything totally lifelike and sort of mixing in elements of of you know different textures and colors maybe that would be on there um but it wasn't a deliberate choice by monet he had cataracts develop in his eyes and that is what he was seeing and when his daughter i believe or so he basically when he found out he started to destroy them because he's like, well, I hate these. And his daughter was the one that, that saved him and stopped him. He was like, no, these are, these are beautiful. They're great. It doesn't matter if it's not, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, they're great. So, yeah, we almost didn't have, and we've lost some, but uh, uh, but almost didn't have a bunch of water lilies just simply because he artistically was not satisfied with it. For, for again, ironically, not being enough realistic when it's Impressionism. All right. And click that stop sharing button. But I gotta get to my screen so I can see you again, Becky. How'd you do? We got nine out of ten on that, correct? Uh, me eight again. Eight. Oh, which was the one that you missed? The um, other one besides Princess I, Murray. I uh, named the first picture the birth of Adam. Oh, I mean, I would accept. Give oh, give yourself a because if I had people write down the Sistine Chapel, I accepted it because a lot of people know it as that. They don't know, you know. So that's so close enough that you yeah. can, if you want to give yourself a half point for it, whatever. All I'm right. not gonna be. It. I mean, also in trivia, when we do it at um, the saddle and all these, you're scoring yourself, and right. so you're just being honest, anyways. You're on the honor system. I mean, in reality here. I, I, I know you're not, but like nothing is permanent from this like movie. Sarah Pierce is like Googling me and like, ah, 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 ah. yeah, and those playing at home as well. Like, you can Google these if well, you want, but then why are you playing trivia? <laughs> I literally, literally don't get people who go to trivia and then just like will try and cheat and look up the answers. It's like you want to win that bad, but you don't want to do the effort of actually learning. Like, okay, you don't really understand what trivia is about. Then. A rant for no one. <laughs> um, we are now on to our last category for trivia, but before then, why don't we sneak in uh, our little parlor game? Woo! Oh, yeah. An old-fashioned okay. term, uh, which what is, I, I will explain, yes. Meatloaf. What is more meatloaf is the name of the game. It is something that we developed on a car ride up to Chicago where we just needed to stimulate our brain and found the idea of this concept so... <laughs> dumb, fascinating, and open to interpretation as much as you want that we m immediately had to keep doing and, and coming up with uh, things for these. Uh, the way that you participate in what is more meatloaf, it is extraordinarily simple. You are given two different things and you have to, based on your own criteria, tell me which one is more like the singer meatloaf. Not the dish, but the singer meatloaf. Right. You can come up with any justification you want. You don't have to have a justification. You don't have to tell me a damn thing. You can just pick it. But it is simply to explore your mind and do you figure out and find out what do you think about these things and which one of them are more meatloaf. So are you ready to play? Yes. Yes. I mean, it should be. It's pretty easy. Um, tonight's categories from come from a very good friend of mine and someone you know, Scoots. One of my best friends, she sent me a nice series of them because I asked her for it and she delivered. Oh so my you this you is are gonna be a treat. It's gonna be a treat. You know it. Um, so we have several here that we're gonna go through. And again, you can take as much or a little time as you want to respond. This is fair, you know, it's basically uh word association, but much more too specific. Right. So here we go. Okay. What's more meatloaf? Buying Greenland. Or killing Herman Cain? <laughs> um, it's very, it's, I know, a very serious topic. You have to rattle it through your brain. You, you have to release that stress by laughing. But which is more meatloaf? We do need an answer on this. Killing Herman Cain or buying Greenland? It's one of the two. I think, I think buying Greenland. Yes, I like that. I don't since think it's our first one. So, 
there's no wrong answer. And I'm going to give you my answer, though, because obviously I'm going to pick mine, too, because I have to think about it as well. And I haven't seen these before. I'm reading them off the list just as they go. Uh, my answer is killing Herman Cain simply because Meatloaf was an anti-vaxxer and how he died yeah. himself. It okay. just seems All right. a little... That's a bit morbid. I didn't mean to start it off on this tone, but that's just my reasoning. It okay. is my honest opinion. That's what right. Meatloaf. But also buying Greenland is Meatloaf too. That's the thing. All these things are Meatloaf. It's just which one's more. Our next one. Hey, this is actually interesting. It's a little bit of a callback from someone we've previously mentioned. Who is more meatloaf, Scarlett Johansson or her secret twin, Frangelica Johansson? <laughs> Scarlett or Frangelica? Keep pondering. Oh, I like this. Mulling it over. I think I have an answer in my head. But I can bounce between the two. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds and then I'm going to insist you have an answer in three, two, one. Which is more meatloaf? Scarjo. I picked Frangelica. But that's just more of because I just like the name Frangelica. Well, I do like Frangelica. Yes, but you, your answer probably is more yes. correct. Since it's, it's a person that exists, and Meatloaf is also a, a person that existed versus, you know, a secret made-up entity. Right. Um, but, you know, what if Meatloaf himself is a secret made-up entity? Who are we really? What are the masks that we wear in our daily life? Moving on. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I even know what this question means, but I'm saying it. Which is more Meatloaf? Ham rove or ham loaf? Ham rove. R O V E. Missy's going to do some quick Googling to find out what ham rove is. Um. Oh, okay. I, I'm i going to show you now on my screen who Ham Rove is. Uh, it, it was related to what I thought it was, which is, uh, uh, what, who's the most famous Rove that you immediately think of off the top of your head? Oh. Of course. So this is, you know, a, a unknown <laughs> a relative of his, who's also a political strategist, Ham Rove. So, ham loaf or ham loaf, which is more meatloaf. I'm enjoying this way too much for as simple the simple yes. concept it is. Because we're actually thinking about it, and that's why I hate it, because you actually start thinking about I it. Know it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to be insisting on an answer. Here we go. Countdown. Three, as I do a two finger, two, one. Ham rove. Thank you. No disagreement there. Now, oh, now this is a personal question that this is very much for for uh for Becky here, um, who might be aware of these two figures. Who is more meatloaf? Theo the cat or Stroganoff the cat? Theo being uh, one of my, our our pets, and Stroganoff being one of Scoots's pets. Well, I will I will tell you they are both very meatloaf. I mean, I don't think I know Stroganoff, so I'm gonna have to go with Theo. That is absolutely fine. It is acceptable answer. I wasn't sure if you would know it, but that does mean we're gonna have to get you to beat Stroganoff. That's yeah. a promise, a missy promise that we're gonna have to do that. All right. And maybe upload the video. Who knows? Content. Always be making content. Next one. Oh, here we go. Big header here. Who is more meatloaf, Gary Busey or Nick Nolte? Is it Gary Busey or is it Nick Nolte? <laughs> oh. Oh. I 
we're talking them currently, not in their heyday, right now. Which right transfer, now. You know. Uh, 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 did Gary Busey pass away? Am I Mandela affecting that? I don't know. I don't know. I know Nick Nolte is still I, around, but either way. I don't know. Nick Nolte. Well, we'll tell me what the computer said. Uh, yes, there we go. Perfect. Nick Nolte. Ah, a question for our times that we should ask ourselves every time we see one of these. Which is more meatloaf? A lesser Baldwin or a minor Kardashian? Um, who? I think a lesser Baldwin. Acceptable. I think that feels right. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just a gender thing. And no, I think it's a, it's a whole ethos thing. But it's a whole, yeah. I I, I think, think me, ones, mm, yeah. You're yeah. If, if if Meatloaf is if, if Meatloaf was a secret family member of any of these two, he's a secret Baldwin brother. Yeah, yeah. Or Baldwin uncle. Here we go. Last one. Or no, excuse me. We have two more. I apologize. Okay. Two more here. QAnon or Al-Anon? QAnon. I mean, that is just fact. That's yeah. just a straight up fact that we know. Here we go. Our last one, and it is very meatloaf. These are both very meatloaf. Going to give you time to think about it. Don't just rush to the answer. Which is most meatloaf? And I use the word most because is it not doing that or having two out of three? You really need to think about this because this is our most meatless question of the evening. We've been we've had some very good ones. Scoots has hit a grand slam tonight, but not, we're not Scoots. you know swear wording around here. Scoots is the awesome crafter of the the witches more whoever. Mm. She's yes. Yes. I'm popping my knuckles now for any audience members that hate that. Ha 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 ha. Okay. Let's both let's both say our answer at the same time here on the countdown. I'm prepared. Not doing that or having two out of three in three, two, one. Not I doing that. Two out of three. <laughs> I mean, I will always pick not doing that. If it's, if it's an option to not do something, I'm always not doing that. <laughs> uh, this, this round went exponentially better than I could have imagined, even in my head. It will sure be a, a not a fixture, but it will be in regular rotation on here because clearly I it is important. It. And please, everyone, please. I'm gonna get right. I'm gonna get right on the microphone and right on the camera. Hey everyone, please spread this around. Play it with your friends in honor of that crazy <laughs> son of a gun. Which is most meatloaf? Yeah. Which is more meatloaf? And what is just meatloaf? And with that, we're going to go on to our last round of trivia here. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around and participating so far. Uh, we are now just slightly over our hour cool. mark. Ooh. Ooh. We get to a nice... <laughs> we get to the, uh, we're going to get definitely under 80 minutes here, I think, which is the you know amount of running time that I think a film has to be to qualify as a film. Like, if your film is not 80 minutes... What are you doing? Are you doing? You're just you're doing like a, a student film, I think. And if it's doesn't even hit 90 minutes, I'm not happy about it. I'll accept it, but it's like 80. I'm like, you couldn't find 10 more minutes in here to make it a nice even hour 30. There was no no other avenues for nothing else, or the content you made was so bad you had to cut down. It's just I start asking questions when you put it in the 80 minutes. That's all. So we're gonna try and hit the 80 minutes ourselves for everyone else has that question. All right. Yeah. Our last round of trivia, which I am now going to be getting up. Oh my. It is one, we'll see your knowledge of it's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet round tonight. Bo, 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 bo. Can I 
phone my friend Kim Hames. I mean, literally, if you want to, you can. If if she agrees to be, if you, if you she agrees to pick up the phone on there. To to bed. Anyway, if I get stuck, I'll call her. We'll reserve. Acceptable. That. You can text. Yes, you can. You feel. Yeah, maybe text her or uh, message her, and we can see what she says. You are allowed on this one. Have a fun Friday. You at home are not allowed. Becky is our special guest, and even though she is yes an audience surrogate, we're assuming that she is now on That's a team question. trivia with. Kim, okay. Yeah. Uh, Kim is a good friend of ours. Also, uh, she's part of Iowa Stage uh, uh, with me, uh, and she uh, creates crafts, puppets, and very muppety like puppets. I love to enjoy. Yep. Um, so it is. She, she's very talented with it. So yeah, that would be why she might be uh, the go-to person for Becky here. All right. No more fooling around. We're talking about Muppets. Muppets. One of, most, one of the most important cultural staples that apparently only I and a few other nerds still care about. Um, number one, what TV show debuted in 1969 on PBS and was the first educational children's show for kids, which I know is a redundancy. A children's show for kids is obviously for children and for kids, you know, but it is for them, but it's, you know, children show and a brain malfunction from the redundancy department of redundancy. I think you know this one. So let's move to question two. What singer guest starred on The Muppet Show and sang his hit Crocodile Rock alongside Muppet Crocodiles? So really, the question is, who sang Crocodile Rock? <laughs> but probably one of the most famous episodes uh, of the Muppets that out there. This person might secretly be a Muppet. <laughs> I know. I mean, I know. I'm. And I. I basically did. You know, Muppet makeup tonight, and I'm fully aware that I am. You know, I can ask the question: Am I a woman or a woman Muppet? Um, and I probably would have to answer a woman Muppet, <sighs> but on purpose. Question three. Oh, I love this one. Name two members of the Muppet Show house band, The Electric Mayhem, pictured here. I'm assuming you know at least one of them for sure. But, Becky, do you know any, any of the others? Yes, I do. Yay, I'm glad. This this was a, this one I got a little, like, four people thought it was, you know, a little hard. They all knew one person uh but didn't know couldn't quite figure out any of the other ones or remember them so hopefully you at home you might be a little more but i know at least Muppets. three very good i know six but that's because i wrote the question <laughs> number four what member of the original muppet performers voiced miss piggy Fozzie Bear, Grover, and Bert, and went on to have a successful directing career, including directing two Muppet films. No idea, but it should have been Audra McDonald. <laughs> and not that it's of, of will be of any help, but I can just tell you the two Muppet films uh, that they directed uh, were uh, the second and third one, the Muppets, uh, the Great Muppet Keeper, and the Muppets Take Manhattan. There's another, there's another puppet that he has voiced that might help lead to it, but I'm not going to say what it is yet. <laughs> but do you at the audience know at home? Eh? Look at this. What museum in Washington, D.C. Uh, was donated Jim Henson's original Kermit the Frog, as well as a collection of other Muppet characters? Uh, our picture here is, of course, Miss Piggy with some goober. Some goober. Some goober. A much... Thinner Cooper. <laughs> and, and I will allow you, I would love, love the specific name of the museum that it's in. But if you, I will accept the general name that people have for this because um, not yeah, everyone knows Yeah, the general name this. is all you're getting out of me. That's fine. That's fine. I didn't know if you knew or not, but yeah, I, I, I again, 
I don't want this to be punishing, and I just figured people would know the name of it in general versus knowing, well, it's in it's it's actually in one of these specific ones. If you are here, uh -huh. I've been in DC too many times that I just love going there, and I stop at that museum every time because it's it's interesting. All right, which of the following stories has not been adapted by the Muppets into a TV special or movie? Which of the following stories has not been adapted by the Muppets into a TV special or movie. I use the word special or movie, uh, but it should also, the connection is TV movie as well. These were all done on TV. None of them were released, uh, as far as we know, uh, in cinemas. But three of these stories were, in fact, uh, adapted, if not directly in name, but in story form uh, by it. And one of them was not. Think you have an answer for this one? I have an answer. It's probably not okay. right, but I got an answer. We'll see. Number seven. Which How I Met Your Mother star wrote and starred in the 2011 reboot film, The Muppets? Were you? Uh, did you watch How I Met Your Mother when it was on? Uh, not really. Okay. I, I did. I was high school at the time and upset like me it was one of the, and it was one of those rare shows that like me my brother and my sister all liked and like my parents our parents didn't so it was like our thing which is really cool but now like i it, it was so of the moment that i can't go back and watch it and like enjoy it because it is it feels weirdly yeah. dated you know and like very it, again i don't I don't I haven't watched it it's not like i find it unfunny now it was just more of like oh this does not hit in the same way that it did. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, 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 I'm good having seen that one. But yes, which start from that? Number eight. T he he. Put these '90s Muppets film in chronological order. Obviously, by release, not by setting of the, not by setting of the story, but by release of the film. Well, I could have actually done that. I mean, you know what? Maybe it's the same. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, uh, which of these three? I find it interesting. Two of them adaptations of public domain works, and one of them, uh, one where it's about all about Gonzo and him being a real alien. It, it also has, um, now problematic actor, uh, Jeffrey Tambor in one of my favorite performances in a film, you know, all, all things aside. Uh, and he deliver, he plays like the director of a space agency who is not being able to convince everyone else that Gonzo is a space alien, you know, in sort of an Independence Day period era. But there's just a moment where uh, the other characters sort of laugh at the idea he has and he delivers in this exact cadence, this line. Don't laugh at me! And I have that stuck in my head for years because I don't know why. It's just one of the fun, funny, <laughs> specific deliveries of that. I'm like, oh, I would never have never have read a line like that, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> some Shatner acting at, at like peak, every, a period in every word. My God, I love it. We should have these in order by now. There's only three. We're going to go to the next one. Oh, a fun favorite is Oscar trivia. Here we go. Name one of the two songs featured in Muppet films that have won an Oscar for best song. Two of them have done it. One of them I'm thinking you could probably guess, and the other one is just an interesting, has an interesting winning scenario that we'll go well, into. Well, I know the former, but not the latter. Probably, yes. I'm. That is the assumption I made, which is why I had one of the two, because it was more of... Uh, <laughs> the problem is, is that because two won, I can't just ask which which one. Which one? <laughs> and it's like, well, I'll give you two. Hey, if you know the other one, like, I'm more power to you. I know it. I'm, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever you want to consider my situation of knowing things uh, on there as well. So, do do do. Since you know it, we're going to know the last question. Oh, my. Within five episodes, how many episodes were made during the five seasons of The Muppet Show? Now, have you watched um, much what? of the original Muppet Show? Sorry, there's nothing to repeat. Nope, oh, sorry, Siri. <laughs> 
I was just going to ask you really quick how many episodes of the Muppet Show there were made. Oh, no, so, oh, oh, you might want to wait until after this question. You can ask when. When, when was the Muppet Show on the air, Michael? Uh, Missy. Um, you can call me either because I am both at the same time. Um, Missy says uh, it is. I believe seventy-five to eighty uh -huh. is when the original release was. That sounds reasonable. And yes. that yes. can give you an and, idea. And who of, was of... a young child during that time period and would have been sitting at home? You Watching. know, actually, I think it was a maybe a little earlier than that. It might have been like seventy four or three. Yeah, you know, yeah. I know for sure it was in the seventies. Yeah. I thought it bled slightly into the eighties, or like ended in the eighties. But again, I haven't looked, and I have the trivia up. On well, the though, I guess seventy five. That might have been right. It's just what I have. Uh, it's, again, that's just what I have on top of my head. I could go grab my DVD of uh, the Muppet Show, but I just don't want to <laughs> leave the chair right now because we're all almost done. But anyway. Um, yes, my answer is yes. I have seen many, 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 many of the original episodes yep. of The Muppet Show when they originally aired. I was, again, a late comer to The Muppet Show. I don't think I saw it until I was in college because it just wasn't on. Yeah. You know, by the time I was a kid, it just, you know, wasn't on syndication in there. But I loved, I loved Sesame Street and I loved every Muppet thing that I got my hands oh, on. Yeah. So it definitely was ingrained in me for sure. Okay. Do you need any repeat ad? No. Okay. I think we have stalled long enough for the audience to have some uh, answers written down here. And now we're going to reveal the answers to our last category. I am so glad you've been able to join me with this, Becky. You've been a very good audience surrogate. <laughs> for one last time, it's time to reveal these answers. The Muppets answers. For number one, that PBS children's show for kids is Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Can you tell me how to get? Yes, I can. You can take a right. Um, Elton John was, of course, the singer of Crocodile Rock, who sang with those puppet crocodiles. Uh, probably, again, one of the most famous episodes of The Muppet Show. Uh, the band leader for the Electric Mayhem, that is Dr. Teeth. Dr. On Teeth. drum is Animal. On bass is Janice. Janice. On, uh, I believe, rhythm guitar is Floyd Pepper. Uh, and Zoot plays the sax. And Lips, probably the most obscure one, because I don't think his name is actually said in a movie or anything. It might be on the show, but the first five were all named in um, The Great Muppet Caper. Lips is uh, the last member who plays the trumpet. Yeah. And I would have also possibly accepted Ralph the Dog, who is piano player during the um, Electric Mayhem, uh, the Muppet Show. He's in the uh, the uh, what's the word I'm saying? House band, I guess. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say orchestra, but I don't really don't really yeah. think I can consider a full orchestra down there. Uh, next one, we have that director and uh, actor who voiced uh, Miss Piggy and uh, the like, and also. Yoda, which is where a lot of people know him from, and that is Frank yeah. Oz. He directed one of my favorite films of all time, which is Death at a Funeral, a uh, British film, and it is... He directed that? Yes, it is wow. absurdly funny. It is uh, it is just mind-boggling, one of the funniest farces, uh, which shouldn't be that funny, because again, it's, it's about a funeral, a and funeral. I've never giggled and laughed so much at, um, at people grieving. Am I a sociopath? No, I just enjoy art. Number five, the Smithsonian Museum of American History. I assume a lot of you probably or, know down the Smithsonian. The Smithsonian. Yes, because um, again, the Smithsonian is the catch-all name for all the complexes. So yes, it is actually contained at the Smithsonian, but specifically the Smithsonian Museum of American History. If you're ever in DC, you gotta schedule Smithsonian tours. They're all free. You can just walk in. You get a good view of them. Um, the Smithsonian Museum of American History specifically is like an artifact collection for pop culture and history nerds. You can see stuff like Ben Franklin's walking stick and Mr. Rogers' sweater and the original Kermit all in one building. And you can all go, wow, culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm near it. Six. Casablanca is the film that was not adapted by the Muppets, although I desperately... Desperately Can want to see. It. I just say that 
I am really experiencing the Mandela effect right now because I swear to God, I can see Kermit and Miss Piggy (laughs) in raincoats. In black and white, what, in what, the tarmac of the what, airport. Why can I see that in my head? Now, I am wondering, I'm wondering here, it could have been a sketch on one of the Muppet shows or on Muppets Tonight. I didn't look into see if there was a sketch. I just looked at the filmography of the TV movies. And those, the ones for sure, um, they were uh, Wizard of Oz, which was just called Muppet Wizard of Oz. Very, you know, Muppet Treasure Island, Muppet Wizard of Oz, that, that I'm uh, stylizing. Um, Cinderella was straight up called Cinderella, and that was yeah. one with the early Jim Henson Muppets creations. A lot of the ones that were in the Muppet Show, I think uh, Kermit was it was one of his first, you know, special appearances and things like that. Uh, and then the last one was uh, "It's a Wonderful Life," which they had a TV special called "A Very," I think it's a very Muppet Christmas. I'm actually blanking on the exact. Um, title for it but the significance of it is i'm i'm not joking it is the during the part where kermit is having his whole oh i wish i had never been born i've you know the muppets are you know failing right now no one loves us um they then visit what the world would be like (laughs) in a very one specific easter egg reference uh doc hopper who is the villain of the muppet movie who wants to make a chain of fried frog legs fast food restaurants uh he learns that he succeeded and the like all the food courts have like (laughs) a a fried frog leg stand in there because he didn't stop him but the weird background detail is there's a shot of the skyline in miss piggy's apartment in in um and in, in the background this movie was released in 2002 there's a view of the twin towers which implies that for some reason because kermit was born 9 11 happened and the reality is production happened before and no one noticed the detail to edit it out of the airing but when right. it went to the air it just created a great conspiracy theory that instead of bush did 9-11 it was, it was kermit did 9-11 um again uh, not an actual thing but just the implication of taking it at face is incredibly yeah. dark and incredibly amusing fantastic it is a very very weird thing that happened um Number seven, Jason Segel was the uh, How I Met Your Mother actor turned uh, writer on that. Uh, he'd been desperately trying to do it for years. In fact, when he did the um, vampire puppet show that they did in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, that was because he loved the Muppets and was weirdly his idea of a backdoor pitch of being like, I'm, the pup- I'm a puppet guy, I'm a puppet guy, you know, you can hire me. Uh, and it worked. Okay. Uh, I wish that movie had done better than it did. Number eight. Uh... The uh, chronological order is A, The Muppet Christmas Carol, 1992, C, Muppet Treasure Island, 1996, and B, Muppets from Space, not pictured, 1999. That is the order of those films. Did you get that one right, Becky? Um, Yes. Nice. Very nice. You, if you, I, I imagine you could think back, and they're pretty distantly apart. You can kind of guess them maybe even yes. where they're on it. Um, number nine, the two Oscar-winning songs – one is Rainbow Connection from the Muppet movie, 1979. And the other was Man or Muppet, uh, which I referenced earlier as Woman well, Man or well, Muppet, um, from the Muppets 2011 one. Uh, the interesting thing about the Man or Muppet win is that it was the winner in a two-song nominated category, the other one being a song from Rio, which I believe was produced by Will I Am. And those were... those. Those two songs. I remember two, that now. Of, of, all, of all music, all of 2011 movie music, all of it, the Academy was like, you know what? Only these two really hit the threshold. And it's voted on by a member. So they literally, they are scoring it. And if it doesn't reach a certain score, it doesn't get in. They didn't like purposely try to exclude anyone or force it in there. They just said, well, only two of the songs actually qualified. So... Here you go. Vote on which two. And the Muppets won. So yay! Two Oscars! Yay! That's Kermit would say. Ten. Last one. Last question. The number of episodes. 24 episodes each season. 120 episodes. Were you within five, Becky? No. Oh, what did you say? I... 
I put 72 because I think 72 is a funny number and I That's, didn't really have any idea. I will take an acceptable answer that is funny to you. I think the number 42 is funny. Thank you, Weird Al. I think, or excuse me, 27 is funny. Thank you, Weird Al. And uh, 42 is funny. Thank you, Douglas Adams. So those are, if I need to just fill in a random number, I'll probably will use one of those two yep. in there as well. So I totally understand. Is Can I ask you why you think 72 is funny as I stop sharing the screen now? Because now I'm curious that you said that. Um, because it's, there are so many syllables in it, but 27 is it. 72. Yeah. yeah. But see, 27 is a good number too. 27 is my go-to number when I want to exaggerate something. Mm-hmm just a little bit kind of too much it's 27 i have a late breaking comment here here's a youtube link that my friend jason aka uh alien posted there is a muppets casablanca sketch <gasps> we're going to oh i want to watch i'm going to send it to you oh. you can watch it on our phones because i don't want to get oh. streaming this. Bye, bye. Oh, are you going to watch the muppets come on um, so I Watch will get it. this link sent to you. Uh, here's the details that he did. Uh, oh gosh, I gotta figure oh, out. Thank God, thank you, thank you. Sorry, I'm having trouble copying and pasting oh, it. So I'm keeping this right here. Having... So, do you, um, I'm gonna look up this link on my phone. I'm gonna send it to you, and this is how we're gonna end uh, our stream here. We went over the 80 minute mark. We got it. We're gonna be hopefully under. It's a five minute sketch. You know what? We're going to go a full short comedy. We're going to go at 130 minutes, and that's do fine, it, everyone. This is important, late-breaking development. We have yes. got to do it. So I'm going to look at Muppets Casablanca, and I'm going to assume that oh, I will get I'm so glad I'm not living in a parallel universe. Maybe, maybe I am. Oh, good. Oh, perfect. And it's in one of those. Um, uh, oh, this is a like a. Good, a 44 second clip actually it says. Um, yes, I don't know why, I, for some reason I read 45, you see it's 45 -ish seconds. I, I just, it's in the front of the screen here too. I don't know why I thought it was five minutes. Oh, I thought it was five minutes because I'm an idiot because we were five minutes to the time. I, that's just, my brain just was like, oh, and that's all the time we have. Oh, it'll fit it all. I don't know. This happens when you get wired across, you get older. I'm 32, you know, oh, I'm in my 30s. <laughs> Ooh, life begins at 30. Ooh. I mean, I actually love my 30s more than I love my 20s, so that probably is right. Okay, I'm sending you this um, via a non script messaging app to you. Uh, since I can't show it on the screen, uh, we will time it and watch it at the same time, and we can give our reactions. So that way, again, no DMC takedowns from whoever owns the rights. I don't know if Disney owns the rights to the... The weird thing about the Disney rights is that they have the Muppets, but they don't have all the Jim Henson stuff. And so I'm guessing this is included, but there's things like specials and like... Like Fraggle Rock is not included in the Muppet deal and all that kind of... It's just weird. So I have no idea who owns this, but I did again. No DMC takedowns. So I have it on my phone here. Um, and we can start playing it at the same time. I'll give you a countdown. Well, I'm watching... Oh, did you just watch it? No, you just watched it? Oh, no, no, I did not just watch it, but I have an ad. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me know when you... No, hang on. I got to skip ad. Okay, it... hang on. That's okay. Fine. Oh, mine started playing without me looking. Okay, so I'm... Stop. Pause, you son of a gun. Okay. Full screening it. Paused. I'm pretty... This looks like... Oh, it looks like they're playing a movie in the actual... I thought this was like someone filming their TV, but I'm pretty sure that it's on there, so... Uh, everyone, you can just watch our reaction. Give you some time. Get down. I hope you got it already loaded up on your thing here with the URL. I have it on here again. You can take a pause with it. I'll give you the countdown. So everyone, watch this <laughs> Muppet Casablanca clip in three, two, one. Last night we said a great many things. You said I was to do the thinking for both of us. Well, I've done a lot of it since then, and it adds up to just one thing. You're getting on that plane with me where you belong. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not on it, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon, and for the rest of your life. Yes. I am <laughs> I am so so glad. 
<laughs> that this is a mostly visual joke clip that we have to explain. What basically happened is those were just lines from Casablanca. They weren't spoofing it at all. But the joke is, is that the plane is making so much wind that it's blowing Miss Piggy slowly off screen and then not so slowly. So if you want to see <sighs> the Casablanca sketch that in Becky's mind, no Mandela, it's real. It is, it's, it, it's worth it. If you're a Muppets fan, especially, it's worth it. Viewing content is always worth it. Just like viewing <laughs> us. And speaking of Becky Schultek, thank you so much for being a part of the first ever Missy Information Teaches Woo! Trivia, which went off in my head, maybe delusionally, but spectacularly. I couldn't have asked for Again, a better audience surrogate than you. We have now hit Thank an you. hour and 30. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything, uh, as you know, just to repeat and be a blabbermouth like the podcast do, is there anything you want to plug? Come to Girls Weekend, too. Yeah. Please, and I have a stage. And I have a stage uh, in April, hopefully. If Mr. Omicron doesn't want to call. Right. Her, 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 her. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much. I am now going to be ending this stream, but I'm going to be streaming video games with my nerd bros. Missy's got some bros and some hoes, but tonight it's the bros before the hoes. I know I'm breaking the code, but hey, if I had more female, female gamers in my life, then I'd be doing it with them. But this is where it is. Silly boys. Silly, silly boys. Uh, so if you like dick jokes and someone being bad at video games, I'm going to be starting that stream uh, shortly here. Yeah, my friend Jason, he knows it. He's going to be one. He's a bro, he guesses. <laughs> all right. I will see you all at the next Missy Information Teaches Trivia. And I remembered the one thing I said before we go. What did I tell you? I had to get from you. What round of trivia am I going to be doing next month? Oh, God. Um, next month. You're going to be doing mm -hmm. fabric art. Oh, oh boy. Tapestries upon tapestries. <laughs> Look up the Bayo Tapestry, everyone. There's going to be a reference on it, a famous fact about it. I tell you, you have given me a curse and a blessing. Thank you so much. <laughs> we will be doing one round on fabric art fabric next art. time okay. on Missy Information <laughs> Teaches Trivia. Yay! This is the outro credits. We're going out of the show. I'm going to play some video games with my bros, not hoes. Bye. <laughs>